So keep your eyes open, keep your eyes open on that case that John McDonald and Stefania Maruzzi are pursuing to get an inquiry into the CPS because the CPS destroying those emails means that we have an organisation in charge of the justice system which is either too incompetent to do its job or too malevolent to do its job properly. So watch out for that. The next speaker I'd like to call is a member of my own union. He's a member of the Executive of the National Union of Journalists. He's campaigned relentlessly, both within the union, to get the union to support uh, Julian Assange, and I'm very proud that it does, and also internationally, in his role as the Deputy General Secretary of the International Federation of Journalists. Uh, he's here today, Tim Dawson, and it's very important that we have this union support, because when the American government and others say that Julian Assange is not a journalist. It's very important that the entire global community of journalists in trade unions say, yes, he is. Friends, for 230 years, the First Amendment to the United States Constitution has guaranteed free expression and a free press. It safeguarded the New York Times, the Washington Post, and countless other publications in the United States. And you might imagine that it would also offer protection to Julian Assange. But sadly, not everybody in the United States thinks that. Mike Pompeo, when he was director of the CIA, since then Secretary of State, said that the First Amendment wouldn't apply to Julian Assange because he is not an American citizen. What a despicable point of view from a country that claims to lead the free world. Quite rightly, Judges Sharp and Johnson, when they last met, said that this was a question that needed to be decisively answered. They needed to know from the United States government, yes or no, would the First Amendment protect free expression in the case of Julian Assange. So they sought an assurance. Unfortunately, the assurance that has come back is anything other than clear. Where they might have offered a straightforward yes or no, they said Julian Assange may apply for protection and it will then be at the discretion of the court. So what Judges Johnson and Sharp have to determine is whether that is a promise that we can trust. And not only must they examine the words of that promise, which I would say are dangerously equivocal, they must also consider who it is that has made that assurance. It's an administration that we know conspired to steal nappies to try and establish the paternity of a child. It's it's an administration that relentlessly bugged Julian Assange's meetings with his lawyers. It's an administration that deployed countless officer hours within the CIA plotting to murder Julian Assange on the streets of London. A plan they only abandoned late in the day when the MI6 said, actually, we're not so keen on political assassinations in our own capital city. So the question, the question that the judges must determine is, can we trust an administration that acts in such a way? And I say, no, no, no. No, no, no. Let's do that again. No, no, no. The only option at this stage to safeguard a free press and to safeguard free expression is to free Julian Assange. Let's encourage the court to do that. Free Julian Assange! 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 Now let me tell you, whatever is the decision, whatever is the decision today, and I hope it's the right one, but we must stand resolute whenever the decision is to continue to defend the free expression, to continue to defend Julian Assange. I give you my assurance that the National Union of Journalists and the International Federation of Journalists will be side by side in that fight wherever it takes us. Free Julian Assange!